The story begins by showing a man named Loreno, who is in a church to make a confession to a priest. Loreno talks about his past when he was 14 years old, and for the first time he had killed someone. Lorena was afraid that his sin wouldn't be forgiven by God, but he said that stabbing is different than shooting a gun. That's because when he stabbed, he could feel what the man pain before died, hear the skin being torn apart, and it was incredible. Lorena then asked the priest, do you believe that all sinners will burn in eternal fire? If you believe it, please tell me why you did what you did, Albert. Hearing that, the priest was very surprised because why would Lorena know his name? It known that Loreno's purpose there was to kill him. That's because someone had hired him to kill the priest, and it was revealed that Loreno was actually the most respected hitman in the criminal world. Long story short, Loreno made the long and tiring journey to Thailand. He meets an old friend from his profession named Seedon, who lives alone in the middle of the jungle in Thailand. Lorena's purpose in going there was to accept a job from Seedon, as there was someone who wanted to hire him to take the lives of several people. Loreno also told Seedon that he would retire after finishing this job because he wanted to enjoy life before he died. Before giving the names of his targets, Seedon told a story about a 60 years old rich man who fell in love with a young woman. One day, the man was found dead after falling from the 15th floor of his apartment. The police investigating the case closed it down because no evidence was found and assumed it was a suicide. The daughter didn't believe that her father had committed suicide, so she came to Thailand and found her father's girlfriend inside his apartment, along with his new boyfriend. The woman who was her father's ex-girlfriend, Nil, was with her boyfriend, named Tar. That man is not a random person, and he was very dangerous. Tar is known to control almost all of Thailand's drug trafficking, human trafficking, and illegal free fighting in the country. Tar is also a man that the law can't even touch, and it's could say that he's the king of Thailand's dark world. Seedon says that his main targets are the two of them, and asks Loreno to be careful, because this might be the hardest job he's ever had to accept. Somewhere, a man is seen being held as hostage by several people who seem to be torturing him. It turned out that the man who torturing the man was Tar. Tar asked the man to sign a deal so that the man's land and building would be his own. The man actually didn't want to give up his land. But because of the torture he kept getting, he finally decided to sign the agreement before they finally killed him. On the other hand, Loreno is now seen strolling through the streets of Thailand on his way to a nightclub. And in there, while enjoying the music and alcohol, Loreno was also keeping an eye on his target, Nil. Long story short, while Nil was on the streets, Loreno approached her and offered to go home with him. Nil actually refused the invitation because she didn't want her boyfriend to find out. But the man assigned by Seaton to accompany Loreno said that the man who invited her was very rich and would pay whatever Nil asked. Loreno then says that he'll give her 10,000 baht if she wants to be with him tonight. Then them all arrived at Nil's place. Loreno then brought Nil to her room who looked very drunk that night, and while Loreno was in the bathroom, Nil accidentally found a photo of herself that had accidentally fallen out of Loreno's jacket pocket. Nil screamed for help, afraid of what would happen to her. Suddenly, the right-hand man of Tar, Bijan, appeared in front of them. Bijan was actually the one whose job it was to keep an eye on Nil wherever she went. A fight broke out between them, but Loreno was an ordinary man that he could easily defeat. Although Bijin was physically much better than Loreno, Loreno could kill Bijin, who was trying to kill him. Loreno then called Samsak and asked him to pick him up immediately. They arrived at Samsak's house. Samsak told him to rest there for a while before they left again. Samsak asked Loreno what was really going on. Loreno then said that the woman who had been their target had escaped from her house and a giant man had attacked him. Samsak was shocked to hear that, as they soon or later could be in even bigger trouble. On the other hand, Nil, who had escaped from her house, was now at Tar's place. Tar was furious, wondering why all this had happened and why a stranger man was in her house. Nil said that she was very drunk at the time and a man forced her to take her home but the man wanted to rape her instead. 
Vadim, who was there, was also very surprised why Blesian could die in his one-on-one -on -one fight with someone because physically, it took and need many people just to defeat him. But if indeed Blijan had died because of the man who brought Nil, then they had to be vigilant. Tar then ordered Vadim to find the man and find some information from Nil's house and bring Nil to come with him. They arrived at the house. Vadim tried to go inside, but the door was sealed police line by the police who were already there. A little boy was seen watching them, which of course made Vadim suspicious. Then Vadim asked the boy about something that had happened in the house. Vadim's men then asked the little boy, was he knew something that had happened in the house. The little boy then showed Vadim a photo on his cell phone, and it turned out that it was a photo of Samsak. Vadim's men who saw the photo knew who the man on the cell phone was. He was not an ordinary transportation driver, and they knew where to look for him. Later that evening, Loreno took Sumsack to see his old friend on the roof of a building, who appeared to be engaged in an illegal fight. Loreno knew for sure that his friend could be relied upon in his quest to find Tar. That's because his friend knew important and dangerous people all over Thailand. Paul was surprised to see Loreno there, as it had been a long time since they had seen each other. Paul then invited Loreno to his private home for a drink and a talk. Loreno told Paul that he wasn't here for a vacation, but for his last job before he decided to retire. Loreno asked Paul if he could find Tar. That was because this man was related to his last job. But Paul seemed to be hiding something from Loreno, and only said that he had seen Tar, but didn't recognize him. Even so, as an old friend, Paul would try to find information about the man, even though it might be a bit difficult for him to do it but he would still try for Loreno's sake. Paul also asked Loreno to come back here tomorrow, and maybe he could get some information about the man. After dropping Loreno off at the hotel, Samsak headed back home. Samsak was shocked to see his lifeless grandmother in her house. It turned out that it was Tar's men who had killed his grandmother, and then they attacked Samsak. Samsak could defeat the three of them, even he also had to gotten injuries from the fight, but it turned out that Vadim and Vadim's men were also there. Samsek also tried to attack them, but Vadim was not an opponent that could be defeated easily by Samsek. Samsek was then arrested and taken to Tar's place. Tar then interrogated him and asked about the man who had attacked his girlfriend. But Samsek said that he didn't know it and didn't know who the man is. Tar, who was not satisfied with the answer from Samsek, who chose to keep silent, then continued to torture him. Vadim then took Samsak's phone and searched for the last call on his cell phone, and it was connected to Loreno. Tar was furious and told Loreno that he would find him soon and threatened him to see how he would kill his friend. Vadim arrived somewhere and Samsak was still alive. Vadim intended to kill him by sinking Samsak to the bottom of the river. Fortunately, Samsak could get out of the sack and swim up to the surface. He then tried to find help by stopping a passing motorcycle, and rushed to the hotel where Loreno was. Arriving at the hotel, Loreno tried to heal Samsak who looked badly injured. Loreno asked Samsak what was happening to him. Samsak said that Tar's men had attacked his house and killed his grandmother. There were too many of them, so he lost the fight with them. Then they took him to their base, and tried to kill him by drowning him in the river. Fortunately, he escaped from the death. Loreno, who heard Samsak's story, then invited him to leave immediately from there. That's because Samsak had walked into their trap and led Tar's men to his place. And sure enough, some of Tar's men were already inside the hotel looking for them. A fight ensued. After the shootout, Loreno headed to Paul's house to try heal and cure Samsak. Paul then told his men to call the doctor to come to his place immediately. Not long after, the doctor was there and tried to cure Samsak. After checking his condition, the doctor advised them to take him to the hospital immediately, as he had lost a lot of blood. Samsak suddenly had a heart attack, which eventually cost him his life. The next day, Loreno met up with Sidon and informed him that Samsak was dead. Sidon blamed Loreno for his little mistake that resulted in Samsak's death. His mother had entrusted Samsak to him but now he had failed to take care of him. 
Seaton decides to join forces with Loreno and seeks revenge for Sumsac's death. Loreno is happy to hear that and says that they will also work together with Paul. Seaton doesn't like the idea of having to work with him again since they worked together in Cambodia. But what else could they do since Paul was the only one who could lead them directly to the tar? They both went to meet Paul on the roof of the building. Both Paul and Seaton seem to be opening up to each other about the past events between them. But Loreno soon cooled down their meeting and asked Paul to show them where the tar was located during the illegal fight. Paul then said that the location was called the Des. There would only be a few security guards there, and no one would check on them at the entrance. Paul asked them to attack after the fight was over and said they had to succeed because he had staked everything on it. Long story short, Paul was already at the site of the illegal fight. He also met up with Tar, who was also already there. Tar was happy that tonight there was a big fight with big stakes. Tar invited Paul to come with him and make a big party at a nightclub. But Paul declined as he felt he was too old for all that and wanted to go home first as his bed seemed to be calling him. Loreno, Seaton, and one of his men were already at the building that Paul mean. They tried to enter and find where the tar was, but it seemed that some people there were trying to stop them, and suddenly shot at them, which left Seaton injured and his men dead. The people who were there then tried to attack Loreno, who seemed to have survived. But Loreno could get up and fight back. After defeating the men, Loreno then took Seaton to the scene of the fight. But there they only found the presence of a woman janitor and said that the fight had ended two hours ago. And they realized that they had been set up by Paul and Tar, who had been told that Loreno and Seaton would attack him. Seeing how many people had surrounded them, Seaton decided to act as a distraction so that Loreno could get out of the building safely. He also asks Loreno to avenge him and that Loreno should live no matter what. As Loreno escapes in a car via another road, Satan tries to distract them by driving another car and heading to the people surrounding them. The men open fire on Seaton and his car explodes. Then Vadim's men informed their boss that their target had burned to death along with the car they were riding in. The scene moved on, where Paul was shocked to see Loreno alive and in front of him now. Paul had been wrong to underestimate him, because now the hunter becomes the hunted. Loreno ordered him to bring him to their place. He would finish what he had started. After he killed Tar and Nil, he would kill Paul later. They arrived at a nightclub where Tar was. Paul, who felt he had a chance to take Loreno's gun, tried to grab it. But several shots from Loreno could hit Paul's body, leaving him dead. Loreno enters the nightclub and meets up with Vadim. In the hall of the nightclub, Vadim soon realized that it was the man who was targeting them, but he was still alive, who then attacked him suddenly from behind. A fight between the two of them ensued. After finishing off Vadim, Loreno searched for Tar's positions. Tar was very surprised to find out that Loreno was still alive. Without many words, Loreno opened fire, killing Tar and Nil. Long story short, Loreno, who now lives in Seaton's house, was visited by a woman named Julia. Julia was the person who had paid it and came there to paying off her last payment for successfully avenging her father. Julia also mourned Seaton's death in the line of duty. But Loreno didn't seem to like Julia being there and asked if all this money meant anything to her. Loreno then said, Woman like you should be afraid of a man like me, let having the audacity to come here alone. Julia was a bit confused by Loreno's words, because for her, it was her duty to come there and give Loreno the money that belonged to him. Julia also prayed to God every day, so that God would grant all her prayers for her to get justice. Loreno, who doesn't believe in the existence of God, says that if God is really up there, why doesn't God stop me from all the cruel deeds that have been done? Shouldn't he be guilty too, for letting people like you use the money to commit crimes? Then, if God is really real, I'll give God 60 seconds to make me die. But if in 60 seconds I'm still alive, I'll put a bullet in your heart. And before the movie ends, the surviving Loreno is seen walking around in the forest, looking for some foodstuffs that he might be able to get. But while he was drinking water from his bottle, Loreno suddenly died because he was hit by a shot right in the head, 
which was accidentally fired by a little boy who was hunting with his father in the forest. And after that, the movie ended.